Okay, so this is going to be from what we're going to go over on Tuesday. This is uh, charge balances and mass balances. Now, charge balances are basically just a statement of electroneutrality. So if you take the species that you're adding into solution and you break them into their ions, the number of cations is going to equal the number of anions. Okay, as far as charge balances go. So the charge on the cations is going to equal the charge on the anions in a neutral solution. Okay, um, and you've got this lovely little formula where N1, which is the charge of your cation, times the concentration of your cation plus the charge on your next cation plus the ch or times the charge on your next cation, blah, blah, blah is going to be equal to the charge of your anion times the charge, the concentration of your anion. Okay, so remember cations have that positive charge and anions are negatively charged. And I'll work through some examples here in just a minute, but just wanted to show you this. And then we're also going to work on some mass balances. Now, mass balance is basically a statement on the conservation of matter. And this is one of those things that it is much easier to show in a problem what it means than it is to talk about it. But basically the quantity of atoms or groups of atoms of the same species that you put into solution, like that you add to your solution to dissolve into it, has got to equal the amount of that atom or group of atoms that is delivered into the solution. Okay, um, which sounds really, really complicated, but it's not. It's just easier to show you with an actual example. Okay, so here I have put up an example from one of the practice quizzes that is posted on campus, Canvas. What Write the charge balance equation for aqueous solution of sodium phosphate and potassium sulfate. Okay, so your sodium phosphate here is going to break down into its constituent ions. Okay, so you're going to have the sodium, which is going to be plus one, and your phosphate, which is minus three. Potassium here will break into its constituent ions, which is potassium plus one and sulfate minus two. Now, because it is an aqueous solution, we also have to add water because we know that water will also self ionize in solution. So it's going to break down into H plus and OH minus. So then what we're going to do is we're going to feed this information with the charges into our nice little charge balance equation up here. And I'm going to pause the video and get that written in really quick. Okay, so here we are with our equation written in. Now one very important thing to point out here is on our uh, anion side, we actually have coefficients out front because the charge on our anions becomes the coefficient we put out front. So you see we've got the concentration times the charge, concentration times charge. Over here on our cation side, our charges are all one. So we don't have a coefficient out front, but with the anions, we do. And this OH should be up here with these other two, I just ran out of room, so it gets to hang out by itself down there. So we've got three times the concentration of your um, phosphate here, and then two times the concentration of your sulfate there, plus the concentration of your um, OH negative group there. And that is how you write a charge balance equation. Okay. I did want to talk about this problem. This was one that I saw on a couple of his practice quizzes. Okay, so we are looking at 0 0.001 formal of ammonium chloride. Okay, and the first part of the problem is, is write the two equilibrium reactions that are occurring in this solution. Okay, so one of the equilibrium reactions that you're going to think about is it's in an aqueous solution. So you're going to have water that is dissociating into its H plus and OH minus ions. And then you're going to have your ammonium that is dissociating into H plus plus NH3. Now, 
you might be asking, what about the chloride? Well, chloride is a spectator in this. It does not per, um, participate in the actual equilibrium reactions. We will still count it when it comes to mass balances and charge balances for this, but we don't count it in an equilibrium reaction because it doesn't participate in the equilibrium at all. Okay, it just kind of hangs out there. Now, the second part of this asks for the mass balances. So this is a pretty much a one-to-one -one equation. So you've got 0 0.001 molar of the chloride ion and then 0 0.001 molar of both the ammonium and ammonia. Okay, because they both have to add up to be that original mass. And then the third part is the charge balance for this solution. And the important thing to remember here is, is that you have to put in your H plus and your OH minus. And your chloride does get counted as an anion for this question because it does have a charge. It doesn't participate in an equilibrium reactant, but it does have a charge and therefore participates in the uh, charge balance equation for the solution. Um, let me know if you have any other questions about this portion. I did see these on a couple of his practice quizzes. I'm not certain what else will be on there. I'll um, keep you posted and if you have any questions, send me a okay, message. Okay, so this might help clear the mud a little bit on mass balances. So the first example we has, have is we dissolve 0 0.00250 moles of H3PO4 in one liter of water. Okay, that's going to give us a solution that is 0 0.00250 molar in strength. And that is going to consist of every one of these distinct species that all have that phosphate ion. So you've got the concentration, this concentration here, 0 0.0025 molar, is going to equal the concentration of the H3PO4 plus each species it dissociates into. Um, H2PO4 plus the concentration of HPO4 minus 2 and the concentration of PO4 3 minus. So basically every single atom that you put into the solution of a specific species that you're looking at has to be accounted for in your mass balance equation because we know that we can't create or destroy matter or mass. So we have to make sure that we're accounting for it. Now the next equation is one that I actually took from one of the practice quizzes on this section. Write two mass balance equations for an aqueous solution of 0 0.01 molar um, NaC2O4, a weak diprotic base. Okay. Now diprotic base means that it is going to take on hydrogen ions in two stages. So it'll take one on first, and in the second round, it'll take a second one. So I'm going to pause the video for a second, and I'm going to write our balance, mass balance equations up here. Okay, so I filled in our mass balance equations, and now let's talk about it for just a second. So let's look at our parent molecule here. We've got Na2. C2O4. So when that breaks up into solution, you're going to have two molecules of sodium for every one molecule here. All right. So when we go to write our mass balance equations, the one that we've only got one molecule here of the C2O4 is going to have the same molarity as what we put in. So 0 0.01 molar. But because that one is the diprotic part that takes on those hydrogens, you got three different concentrations you're adding up to get to that 0 0.01 molar of the total, okay? And the sodium, we've got 0 0.02 molar of the sodium because, again, we've got two atoms of sodium in this original solution. So we're going to have twice as much molarity wise of our sodium as we are of our our molecule that we only have one copy of for every two sodiums. If you have any questions about this I can work through some more put some more up here just let me know 
Um, this should be what he covers on Tuesday.